All right, what's up guys? So we're back with another video. This is the update video that I was talking to you guys in the video review studio of everything that's been going on with the car right now. All right, so right now I'm actually doing an install. I'll show you guys how to do it in a second. Uh, I've already done this side. I just got to do the other side and it's relatively simple to how to do the shocks on this. That's all I'm doing. All right, so a lot of stuff has happened with this car. Since when I recorded the shots and clips and stuff from the last video, a lot of stuff has happened with this car. All right, and I'm gonna go through all of it. Uh, but first, let me finish the shock installation and then, uh, and then we'll get on with everything that's been done to the car. All right. All right, so once you jack up the car and everything, you want what you want to do is take a jack stand, put the jack stand underneath the car, take the jack, jack up your rotor. I don't know what that is, but I'm going to pretend like I didn't see that. Um, jack up the rotor, so that way you can get the shock, the bottom bolt right here, to clear the uh, sway bar. All right, because if you don't, then it's going to be a little pain in the ass to try and get out. You'll have to loosen up the uh, the sway bar in order to get the bolt out. Whereas this way you can just take the bolt out right away. Alright, so then after that, what you do is you take preferably an impact. I have an impact, but if you don't have an impact, what you can do is right there, alright, at the top bolt, alright, You'll take some vice grips and then open-ended wrench. Vice grip right here, and then use the open-ended wrench uh, right there. Whereas, I just have an impact gun, so all it takes is me just going, putting it on top. And then, there we go. And that's it for, for me for the top, top bolt. And then now for the bottom. Probably be better if I had uh, my GoPro, but fortunately right now my GoPro is not available because I lost the, the head. Ow. Ooh. Just smacked myself on the freaking fuel tank. Oh. And then like I said, with the bottom bolt, take the impact. Oh, this one might be a little bit more of a nuisance. Wow, all right, well, uh, give me a minute. Well, after a little bit, I got it, so just do that. And then that's the bottom bolt. And then kind of back, what you want to do is you want to, I'll have to use both hands. What you want them to do is you'll use the impact and then kind of push it out, and it'll help push the bolt out. All right. All right, so then that's, that's it. Then what you'll do is you'll take your new one and then just do it in reverse. And then there you go, you got your shocks in. Shocks are relatively simple. The the ones that are difficult are the, are the struts. Because the springs have a liable chance of actually, if you don't do it right, of uh, shooting out on you. So that's why I don't do it. All right. Well, let's, uh, let me finish this up and then we'll get on to everything that else is actually done to this car uh, since you guys, since I last updated you guys. All right. And then voila. Once it's all back in, there you go. That's how it would look, at least for the Coney or uh, oranges. I was going to go with Coney yellows, but Coney oranges are still almost just as good. So and they're $75 cheaper, I think it was. So, and then what you do, you just hook back the wheel, line everything back up, and then uh, you're all set. So now that's over, 
time for the rest of the upgrades that I've done. All right. So first of all, all right. A lot of these were really just upgraded replacement parts for stuff that broke. It wasn't necessarily that I wanted them. It was more like I had to get them now. All right. Well, I mean, like I wanted them, but like I had to get them because of everything that you know broke. All right. So first of all, I've got new wheels. All right. So right now I only have the fronts on. I have to wait to get the rears on. All right. So I have. Um, I think they are AMRs. These the fronts are 19 by eight and a half with a 255. Uh, 4019 tire uh, Michelin Pilot Sports and then the rears the rear tires that I'm going to be putting on are 19 by 10s with uh, the current tires that are currently on the car which are 285 35 19s all right which are just like the uh, they're general G max they're the cheapest 285s that you can get mostly because they're like three hundred and six dollars per tire yeah 285s are really expensive all right and since I go through tires like non-stop, that's pretty much what I go with. All right. They're really not that bad. I hook really well in second gear. So that's fine with me. First gear is whatever. It's always going to be first gear. I'm never going to hook in there. So, all right. So I have those. Next up, I got a Boss 302 intake manifold. All right. So I ended up paying like a total of $400 and I got the manifold, the throttle body, and the fuel injectors off of, straight off of a 2012 Boss 302. I don't know how many miles that this intake manifold has. Uh, I, when I, I did bring this to the shop because uh, the old intake manifold that was on this car broke. So I had it at the shop to, and I helped the shop uh, put it on and all of that and uh, do a couple things. I don't have the 85 millimeter, so the Boss 2012 Boss 2s have an 85 millimeter throttle body. This is an 82. I don't really see much reason to get a new tune just to go to an 85 millimeter throttle body. I might in the future just because I have it, but for right now it's just sitting in my garage. All right. Uh, replacement cold air intake because we did discover that I had a uh, bad cold air. Uh, intake so that's not new but that's a well I mean it is but this is a replacement for the one that I had on last time all right so it still has the 52 pound fuel injectors that are in here all right so between all that this is all pretty much done and there's not really much more I can do to this all right we discovered because this uh, the Roush intake that I bought only came up to here all the parts only came up to here didn't come with any new tubing and stuff we actually had to cut into the tubing right over here i don't think it'll show you but right below here there's kind of like an air eh, kind of like an air filter it kind of filters out the noise so we ended up having to cut that off and then if i still have the video i'll, I'll pop it in right here but we ended up having to cut that off and then melt the cut off pieces to close this up so that way I can actually use the intake manifold because if I wasn't, if we couldn't do that, then this tube sat like right above the intake because it was rubbing into the uh, coolant hoses, coal lines and stuff like that. We, we, we really couldn't deal with that. All right. So next up, uh, drag springs. This has BMR uh, drag springs, lowers the car by an inch and a half. So uh, they're, they're really good. Really enjoy them hooks really well so there's that all right uh rear lower control arms i've had those for in for a while all right and then last but not least we have the one piece aluminum drive shaft uh from ford performance which is rated for 960 horsepower this is still not making anywhere near that uh i calculated it and a rough estimate without going to a dyno or anything like that is this car makes maybe about 440, 450 to the wheel with everything. Peak, peak horsepower. All right. So typically on average, this manifold on a 5.0 on a Gen 1, you know, it, it adds like a peak horsepower of like 62 or 60. So roughly with the fuel injectors, the manifold, the cold air intake, the one piece drive shaft, 
and all of that and a little bit of weight reduction from all of the new parts being weighing less than the old parts I probably put out about you know 40 450 440 440 450 um, that's being conservative about the, about the numbers and stuff too so and of course I already have an upgrade it's all upgraded tune and stuff rather than the old tune because of the new intake manifold and stuff like that so that is pretty much it that's all I have that's been done oh well actually you know what correction <sighs> forgot about the cosmetics I only did the I only did the performance I only went through the performance so I bought this this is a carbon fiber spoiler I have to remember which brand this was like $500 but I absolutely love it between that and then the uh, RTR gloss black deck lid and then the um, MMR rear diffuser it just makes the, the rear end of this car just looks just look great except for my one little bullet hole spot on the rear bumper that I'm probably never gonna be able to get rid of so it just makes it look great obviously I have the rear the uh, windshield spoiler all right this hood it actually belongs to my friend he in the last video he was the other Mustang that was the three he had a 37 v6 and he had this hood and he also had these headlights which I think are the RTRs um, as you can see that's his old Instagram this is actually his bumper too because he, he got into an accident and the car ended up being totaled so I took his bumper because my bumper was chipping and his isn't chipping but it's got a whole lot of scratches which are easily fixable mine was like it was just it was really chipping really really badly so I took his bumper he's gonna end up at some point maybe taking the hood back and the he's I know he's definitely gonna take the headlights back but he's gonna maybe take the hood back I don't know he said that he was kind of like iffy about it but whatever he decides is whatever he decides it's still technically his hood until he decides to do something with it so for right now I'm just kind of rocking that all right so and that is actually yeah, yeah let, 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 me, let me think yeah that that's actually everything that has been done to this car since the last post which is a lot all right I had to do the the drive shaft because the carrier bearing bushing blew and it was just swinging the drive shaft around the two of uh, the stock two piece so that's why I went to a one piece not only that it's aluminum the the aluminum for performance drive shaft is 17 pounds whereas the stock one which is actually like right over here whereas this one which is currently in two pieces is 47 pounds so I'm already like saving like 30 pounds I think it's I think it's 17 pounds which is aluminum drive shaft it might be 27 either way it's still shaving off at least 20 pounds off of the car and it's rotational mass so it helps to put power to the wheel even better uh, transfer the power from the engine to the wheels even better all right I, I did all the cosmetic parts because of, I just <laughs> I just wanted to uh, the wheels I actually ended up having to get because all of mine were bent and yes I could repair them but I didn't really see any sense of repairing wheels that were bent that kind of looked pretty disgusting and part of it's my fault because I kind of like um, spray paint and well, I'm not spray painted it I forget what it's called uh, Plasti dipped there we go uh, because the Plasti dipped them really bad but also I mean like it's got a lot of cur they've had a lot of curb rash since I bought the car and I just never replaced the wheels and I just didn't see any report or, uh, point of repairing or seeing if I could repair them I might as well have just bought new ones so I went with these ones which are great uh, they're wonderful I love them so I'm just gonna keep on running these all right um, yeah I think I think that's it so I'll get the rear wheels done and then honestly after that there's really not much more I can do to this car I do have to do a rear differential rebuild because my rear diff is kind of going and it's acting more like an open differential which means that clutch packs are really worn out 
which you know after 30,000 of just beating 30,000 miles of just beating on it and the car being at 95,000 miles now it kind of makes sense so once I do that I might do because this car comes with 315 gears I might do 355s or 373s probably 355 because I still want the good high, highway mileage uh, or at least decent highway mileage um, so I might do 355 gears when I rebuild it and yeah that's and then headers long tube headers uh, that's that, that's all that's left to, to be able to do on this car I haven't really decided um, what to do just yet so yeah so we'll just do that all right so I hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, this again this was really just like a kind of like a really of an update video not so much of an install video because the shocks are really simple to install as you saw um, but if you guys enjoyed this video leave a like comment for that you know YouTube algorithm please so that way more people can end up seeing this all right and if you really liked it you know subscribe it's free if you don't want to be subscribed anymore you can always unsubscribe later so all right peace out